Okay, the topic today is very, very near and dear to my heart. Okay, because this is something that, um, oh wow, when was this that I went grain free? I went grain free probably, I'm gonna say like six years ago. Um, I'm gonna say that. But I had a little bit of a journey before that. And so I wanna tell you guys a little bit about my journey because I think a lot of times people go through stuff like this. And when you're going through some health challenges, most of us, we kind of try something and then we see if it works and we add something else and we hear something else and you know, that's pretty common and that's what happened to me. So many, many years ago, like I don't even know how many, but many, many years ago, I started to really feel like I was having some issues with wheat. And it's funny because like I had inflammation problems, I had a weight issue. I mean, I had those things all the time. But then, you know when you get something and you go, okay, I just, I can't ignore this. This, this is a, a distinct um, cause and effect, okay? And it's gonna sound crazy, but my cause and effect was spaghetti. And you know, my kids were little, you typically eat a lot of that kind of stuff I did at the time because of course it wasn't keto and um, I noticed that every time I would have spaghetti within like five minutes I would get this thing where down here not even like in my throat but like down here I guess in the deeper esophagus area or whatever I don't know what that area is called but anyway it was like the pasta was getting stuck that's really the only way I can describe it literally right there I can pinpoint exactly where it was it would get stuck and i can't tell you how painful it was it, it it's sitting there and you're like oh my gosh what do i do and so your first instinct is to take a glass of water right that's what everyone does well you drink the water and the water would sit on it and it still wouldn't go down and now i've got the pain of the water sitting there and it's just like i don't know if you guys know what i'm talking about but it is so so painful now it will you know eventually i guess a little water leaked through or something and it did would work its way through and i thought oh okay i guess i'm just you know ate too fast or had too much didn't chew it enough you know maybe i need to drink a little bit more water get it lubricated <laughs> like you know you, you come up with these things right but after it happened quite a few times i'm going okay there is something distinctly something is happening with the spaghetti like something is happening with this pasta well and it kind of makes sense because pasta is probably one of the most you know dense wheat products that there are out there so it would make sense that if i had a little bit in something else it wouldn't have bothered me that way but that one really really hit me so on top of that of course i had horrific inflammation i had horrible horrible heartburn absolutely like zantac 150 chase it down with a couple tums i mean it was ridiculous the heartburn that i had um i had some i was starting to get psoriasis and eczema on my arms and some other places too but the arms are where i really noticed it but i was getting some patches um just like in my scalp and a little bit on my face um yeah so i had you know a lot of things so the first thing that i thought of way back then was i need to go gluten free and of course it was kind of popular at the time too right so maybe you guys tried going gluten free so I went gluten free and that it, it really did help. And it probably helped because back then, I don't even know, but like a huge percentage of what I ate, uh, probably a good 50% was probably wheat based. So when you go gluten free, I mean, you're cutting out so much that of course it's gonna make a noticeable difference. But I noticed that there were still things that were bugging me, I just, see if that changes for you because it made a huge change for me um so anyways what was I going to say about me um so so these were things that I did before keto okay so that's that's what I was going to say is like I went from gluten-free to grain-free 
And then years later, I went keto. Now, of course, that's the trivecta, right? Like that's the, the absolute best thing that you can possibly do, right? And so obviously when I went keto, it just you know, took me to another level and now is actually able to um, get the weight off and some other health issues and stuff like that. So, um, so that's me now, but there's some of you in the group, um, I see it and I just know it, that I think, you know, you're still, you're still sometimes eating your wheat or your grains or whatever. And truthfully, you can fit them in your macros. I mean, if you want to, you know, you have your little quarter cup of rice or whatever, I don't even know what it is because I don't, I don't eat that kind of stuff anymore. But you know, you probably can fit in those things or you find a really low carb bread or wrap or something like that. And you think, oh, I can fit that in. And you can, you absolutely can. But I want to talk today about the reasons why you might want to try going 100% grain free. And there, a lot of it is to do with your health. It will certainly help with your weight loss as well. But for health reasons, there's so many good reasons to go off. So I'm going to read to you from the book. I'm going to read to you some of the symptoms, things that you may not have thought have any connection to it. And I also want to say that it doesn't matter if you have like one piece of low carb toast that has grains in it, or you eat a whole bunch, it can still be the same thing. Like what I'm saying is don't justify it by saying, well, I don't have it very much because if you have any type of a sensitivity whatsoever, it could be a bite. So that's all I'm saying is that it doesn't matter how much. Okay. So I have a couple areas here. These are some of the things that can affect you from grains. ADHD, allergies and food sensitivities, anxiety and chronic stress. Okay, I want to just point, these are going to remind me of what my problems were because, because these problems are gone, I just don't think of them anymore. I always had chronic anxiety. It literally just kind of sat here all the time low brew, you know, not, not super hard, but then when something would come up, I would do like a 360 up stress attack. Okay. That is gone. That is gone since I've gone off grains. So I just want to point that out. Um, autoimmunity issues, chronic constipation, chronic diarrhea, uh, chronic fatigue. There's a lot of chronics in here. Um, chronic headaches and migraines, depression, diabetes, epilepsy, focus and concentration problems, frequent colds or infections, um, hypertension, inflammatory conditions and disease, including arthritis. I had arthritis. I actually had it tested and I had them in my knees and I had a real hard time walking down the stairs. It was almost to the point of impossible before I went grain free. Now I run up and down the stairs. You wouldn't believe what a flight of stairs I have to get up and down to my office. And I do it a zillion times a day, practically running, no problem at all. I actually thought I needed knee replacements at one point in time. Um, insomnia, intestinal problems, including celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis, Crohn's, memory problems, cognitive impairment, um, and he, he talks about it as being a precursor to Alzheimer's. He talks a lot about brain health in here, just like Amy Berger's book that I talked about last week. He talks, um, Dr. Perlmutter talks a ton about brain health and Alzheimer's and dementia prevention and reversal in this book as well. Uh, mood disorders, overweight and obesity, obesity um, Tourette's syndrome, and much more. One thing I will mention too is that in the times that I have gone back to grain, so I'm not going to say that I've been 100% all this time. I fully admit that there have been some times where I have just very, very temporarily had a meal or, you know, maybe a weekend or something like that. Um, I, I can't even believe how many things come back. I'm talking in just very short order. I will start getting heartburn. I will get a headache. I actually get this like just very little tiny tremor in my hands. I'll, I'll look at my hand and go, what the heck? It's almost like a little, like, I don't know how to describe it, but just like a, a tiny little tremor. And then as soon as I'm 100% off again, after a couple of days, these things are completely gone. I literally get it anytime I go back on. Um, okay. So we talked about being overweight, uh, being able, being unable to lose weight or keep it off. So people that are doing all the right things, they're tracking their macros, they're figuring it out, but they're still struggling. Grains could be the reason that is keeping it holding on. Um, constant craving for comfort foods. 
and constant craving for carbs still having that even though you're following your macros and you're eating a lot of fat and everything but you're still having those cravings for carbs that can be from grains uh, feeling fatigue after meals feeling constantly anxious or stressed out, feeling hungry all the time, or odds, odd hours of the night. I've seen some people in the group that say that they feel hungry late at night or they get up in the middle of the night. There should be no reason for that whatsoever. You should not have any, well, generally you shouldn't have any hunger at all, but especially if you're having it late at night and in, and in the middle of the night, okay? So that definitely can be from the grains. Um, having a tendency to snack after meals, having a high fasted, having high fasted triglycerides, um, having osteoporosis, having problems falling or staying asleep, high blood pressure, regular craving sugar, and having love handles. I guess that's a bit of a sign. So, so I wanted to read those because those are right from his book um, where he goes into some detail there. And yeah, so these are little things. Did, he didn't even say heartburn. Maybe, maybe I missed a, a page on that or whatever, but, I, but heartburn is a huge one um, for a lot of people. So I just really wanted to talk about this because I think that if you're really real with yourself and you're thinking about different health things that you have or whatever, um, think about how often you have grains, okay? So I'm not saying never. Okay, so you do whatever you want, um, for sure. But I'm just saying it's a real consideration, at least as your normal part of your life, you know, pretty much like every day. And then maybe once in a while, just like once in a while, maybe you go off your keto. Maybe it's one of those kind of things. I have found for myself that I am doing it less and less. Um, the last time I did it, was a real backseas for me. Um, I thought, hey, you know what? I can handle this. I can have some grains for a, a bit because um, I never ever have them. And it was like horrendous payback is all I'm gonna say. I have not felt so sick, so horrible. Um, and the worst part is, is that I actually got some pretty significant anxiety for days afterwards, I, I literally was not myself. And I vowed after that to say, I don't care what the circumstance is. It is not worth it for me. It is totally not worth it for me to have the grains. Oh, I'll go off. I'll go, I'll go off on my keto here and there. And, but I'm going to have like ice cream or something. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to have something that, um, is not going to affect me in that way. So I'll still, you know, treat myself here and there or whatever, but it's not going to be with grains. That's all I'm going to say is it made um, that much of a difference. And maybe it's like the longer that you haven't had it and then you go back to it, then you notice these things more. But um, it has really, really changed my life going grain free. So um, I wanted to talk to you guys about that today because... I wanted to see maybe we should have it maybe we should have another challenge in another week and we should do a grain free challenge for people that are still hanging on to their um, to their grains a little bit um, just to see if you notice a difference in your health you know what I'm gonna consider this um, we could make it as part of our um, the week that we do our bone broth cleanse because we're already working on healing our gut um, and that's the other thing when you go grain free like when you're eating these grains they are it is eating away at your gut it is um, you know, if your gut is like the solid thing and then you eat things like that, it puts these little holes, little holes inside your gut. And then when you eat, things kind of leak out. That's leaky gut syndrome. That's basically what that is. And so if we don't eat grains, that is totally helping our gut. When we're doing our bone broth cleansing, we're healing our gut. We're drinking bone broth. We're healing our gut. You know, we're not eating sugar. We're healing our gut. We're having probiotics and apple cider vinegar and our prebiotics, our sauerkraut, our kimchi. We're having all that kind of stuff and we're totally healing our gut. So going grain free is, is part of that. It's part of the message of trying to heal our gut for better health and for better weight loss, honestly. So maybe I will add that in um, the next time we do our bone broth cleanse for anybody that wants to try it just to see if they notice a difference, say for seven days of being 100% um, grain free. And then I can talk about you know, the different ways that it sneaks in. Like for me, um, years ago, I was still having soy sauce thinking, well, soy. Okay, not that soy is like amazing anyways, and that's a different topic. But back then, 
I thought, oh, soy sauce, like that's totally great. No, no, there's all kinds of wheat and soy sauce too. So I mean, it's just like, like learning, you know, what kind of things have stuff. It's not always the obvious. So we could go into some great detail in that one. Um, okay, so I'm going to conclude here pretty quickly because I don't want to keep you guys all day. But once again, this book, which I'm going to give you the link to because I want to make sure that you get the right one. And he does talk about a couple things here. He talks about um, the gut, so how much this helps the gut, how much it helps the brain. So, you know, talking about preventing Alzheimer's, dementia, and that kind of thing for sure. He says that when you take this stuff out and also adding some things in, like he does talk about MCT oil, and I'll read you a little, little thingy here. We are actually creating new neurons in the brain. So instead of destroying things, we're actually creating new neurons. So that's exciting. I think that is super exciting. And when we talk about inflammation from these grains, it's not just in our body, it's also in our brain. And so that is a huge one. You know, one, one thing I forgot to mention is that Dr. Perlmutter is a neurologist. So, you know, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to brain health. And then he was like, you know, just a normal <clears throat> neurologist, like a medical doctor type of thing. But he started to delve in so much into the grain-free lifestyle and keto and all that kind of stuff that now his whole message and passion, passion is all about this. But he is a neurologist. So I just, I like to equate that because sometimes people think, uh, oh, you know, these keto doctors are all blah, blah, blah. But like a lot of them are actual real doctors too. So just to know that they have like a lot of credentials behind them and they know what they're talking about um, he says that a healthy keto this is what he thinks is like the perfect situation okay a healthy ketogenic diet combined with being grain free also doing some fasting and at least one tablespoon of MCT oil per day is what he considers to be like just amazing for your health now the the part i was going to say that he's changed from the book until now that i noticed is that in the book when he's when he does a section on fasting and he talks about um during fasting of just having black coffee black tea like basically zero calories but that was written in 2018 so probably a, a year and a half or whatever has gone by since that edition right that up um, update and so now in his videos and I've watched like I think three interviews I've watched a couple of his own YouTube videos and I go on his website now he actually advocates for having MCT oil during your fasting time so I'm just saying things change and evolve a lot um, but I noticed that that's that change in the book um, he also mentions just for you guys that are interested I know a couple of people are um, he does mention that red wine is a benefit and as well as coffee. So he goes on and explains why. There's a happy medium when it comes to the red wine. Um, my sister is like giddy right now. She's like, yay, thank you. Um, <laughs> she loves her red wine. But there is, there is, you know, he, he gives you guidelines in there because you don't want to go too much. I think his recommendation was like up to one a day or whatever. That there is a lot of benefits um, for a body with it, but you don't want to go too high because then of course we have carbs and there is some sugar in it. And so there are things to think about, but I think what he's saying is like, don't be scared of it. And if it's something that, you know, don't go out of your way to have it. I personally am not a, a red wine fan. I never have been. Um, I'll have a few sips of my sister, uh, sisters when I see her here and there. So I will have some and for a special treat or whatever, but it's not like a regular thing for me. Um, so he's not saying like, go out of your way to have it, but like, if you like it anyway, is like don't be like oh I can never ever have it and he really goes on about coffee so that I was really excited about that he said do not be scared of coffee there's so many health benefits to it and it really does help us um, with our keto journey and with our health so he does talk about that in there so I thought right there you might want to buy the book just for those two things right get you excited um, okay so I just want to see if there's anything else that he said that I wanted to mention um, no nope. I think that was it so I'm going to scroll back a little bit just see if there's a couple things that maybe I could just quickly answer and then I will for sure go through here and I will answer anything today um, for sure and you guys are having your own combos in here too which is really great good morning everyone who popped in and if you happen to see that little thing that says get notified when Lita goes live click it 
Click it if you see it because somehow I think it lets you know in the future or whatever. Um, yeah, so you guys, I don't really see anything um, right here. So I will go through and answer anything today. But I really, really encourage you guys at the very least, if you're still hanging on to your grains, do a little test for yourself. You know, I totally love experiments. And even if you said to yourself, okay, for this one week, this week, another week, whatever, when you know you don't have anything big going on or whatever, say, I'm going to go for seven days and be 100% grain free. And maybe what I'll do is I will actually um, find a list of, of what is a grain. Okay, I'm not going to go into it, into everything now because obviously, you know, wheat and rice and whatever, that's fairly obvious. But there's a lot of like little things that maybe we haven't you know, talked about in the group or whatever. So I'll see if I can find actually a, a pretty good list and then I can pop it in here and I'll post it in the group too so that, you know, everyone's aware. But maybe just trying a week with zero, zero, and just see how you feel. Because it's really only if you go zero, is it going to be, I don't, the one bite thing, no, nope, that can still do it. Literally, that can still do it. So you have to be willing, if you really want to see this for yourself, you got to be willing to go, and I would say at least for a week, because things like sleep and headaches and things like that is not going to happen overnight. It takes a while to get all these grain proteins out of our brain. It's like sh stuck inside of our bodies, right? And um, another thing that you guys could pop in here too, for anyone that is grain free, maybe say the things that have changed for you since you've been grain free. So I'd appreciate it if you would do that so other people can read it as well. And I would love to read it too. So, so you guys, that's, that's kind of my message for today. And, um, of course we'll be talking about the macro challenge, um, this whole week and go to announcements so that you can post your screenshot today and we'll talk more in there. And I will definitely talk to you guys in the group today. Okay. You guys have an awesome day. Take care. Bye. Hey guys, before you go, hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell notification so you can be notified every time we have a new video posted. Also down in the description, I will have links to everything that we talked about in our chat today, including information on how you can join my Intentionally Bear Keto Support Group. See you next time.